Hi everybody, it's Danielle. Welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, thank you for joining me for another afternoon of painting. Uh, I am going to be teaching you guys how to create fairies and bubbles on canvas with acrylic paint. And so um, I hope you have all of your supplies ready and you have everything that you need to get messy. If you are just joining us for the first time, make sure that your surfaces are covered, uh, your hands are washed, you're wearing clothes that are paint friendly and that you have, you know, something to snack on, something to drink nearby and, um, you know, all your supplies within reach just in case, uh, you know, you need something new. So um, if you haven't joined us before, uh, my name is Danielle Rimbert. I am the owner and operator of Rimbert Illustration. I live in a little town called Port Orchard, Washington uh, in the United States. Um, so we have had some people joining us from other countries and other states and I just want to say thank you for that. That's been wonderful. Um, during the shutdown, we have been uh, hosting free online classes every week. So it's been about three months of uh, free online classes and today is the last day uh, because we're starting to open up and so I'm starting to explore some other artistic adventures so I'm really happy that you guys could join me today I will be continuing to do online classes just on a different platform I will post the link to events here and then if you're interested in continuing to paint um, you can either subscribe to my patreon for $20 a month to have access to all the classes that I have available and will continue to have available or you can pay a one-time fee uh, to join and get a link to the the continuing events that I'm going to be doing and I'm so excited to see so many different people from all over and and different places I've been an artist for about 20 years and it's a joy of mine to be able to share what I do with other people and teach you guys how to create um, today's painting is it may look sort of uh, complicated but I'm gonna break it down hopefully for uh, you guys in a way that is simple and easy to follow if at any time you feel that I am going too fast just um, you know you can either watch the replay and press pause or you can tell me to pause and I'll try and slow down as we go but uh, we are using acrylic paint today you should just have minimal supplies that you need um, you know first of all you'll need a bowl of water to make sure you can keep your brush nice and clean uh, you'll need you know a pencil in case you want to do some little practice drawings or you know ahead of time I always have scratch paper next to me just in case so if I want to practice something here I can put it here before I put it onto my canvas so water pencil scratch piece of paper um, you should just need a you know just a few brushes for this um, you know you could have a variety of flat acrylic paint brushes to do blending and big background stuff and then maybe just one smaller uh, smaller detail brush for creating other details so this is called a round brush okay so some of you guys have followed my journey for from the beginning and have painted with me before and I just want to say hello to all of you guys and thank you for um, continuing to support me during uh, all of this madness and for those of you that are newcomers I just want to say welcome and I'm really happy to have you here so um, the colors that we're going to be using today uh, you look I was gonna say if you look at the original painting here um, they are much more mellow in here but um, the colors that we're using are actually just primary color red blue white black and then maybe if you want to play you can add a little bit of green uh, if you have other colors like orange or premixed purple or teal or other things that you want to add in you can definitely add those in I'm just going to give you the basics for this particular painting and then I'll give you some tips on how you can make it uniquely your own after this so hi Patty hi Mindy hi Kathy Hi Judith, nice to see you guys all here today. So uh, yeah, so uh, you just wanna make sure you have just enough paint so that it's not gonna dry out. Um, I use like, you know, you can use a paper plate or if you have a loose plate in your house, that works great too. Make sure that you have like, a, you know, an old washcloth or some paper towels or something off to the side 
to make sure that you have something that will help you clean up your mess. And um, yeah, we're gonna get started. So today I'm going to be working on a canvas panel, but if you just have paper or cardboard or you know something like that, you can definitely use that. The difference between a stretched canvas and a canvas panel is that uh, there is no edge, so it's just, it's just very flat. And I like using canvas panels for beginner painter classes because they're much more durable. They're less, you're less likely to puncture a hole in them or to indent them. Uh, you know, people ask, how do you hang a, you know, a canvas panel? And I said, it's very easy. You can, you know, just pop them into a frame or add mirror clips, no problem, and um, have them hanging on your wall or just take a piece of duct tape and some twine and put it on the back. But yeah, so I'm a big fantasy fan and so I like to paint things like dragons and fairies and mystical creatures like unicorns and um, you know, stuff that has a little bit of magic. And so we want to have a very loose background for this painting, but um, you know, have it be playful and there also to be movement. So the first thing that we're going to do when we create this painting is we are going to do all of the background color that you see on the canvas first. So all the pinks and the blues and the and the whites and all the light colors. And then after that is laid down and dry, we are going to create our silhouette so we can learn to uh, create some bubbles and things. And then we can create our silhouettes of the mushrooms or, you know, the spooky old tree. And so the secret to a good silhouette isn't necessarily having a lot of detail. It's just defining, uh, you know, a a good crisp outline so that people are able to identify what the silhouette is just based on the shape. So we'll talk about um, positive and negative space and how to create an effective silhouette to give you guys a good painting. So uh, hopefully you guys are all ready to go and you know let's get painting. So the first brush that you're going to need today uh, to join along is going to be a flat brush. I have this larger flat brush because I have a larger canvas. If you have a smaller flat brush that'll work too. You'll just be more tired in your arm. It'll take you a little bit longer to paint. But I'm going to take this away and we'll bring it back out for reference in just a little bit, okay? So the painting technique that we're gonna use to create our background um, is called thatching, okay? And so thatching isn't where we just make everything go perfectly in the same direction, either at an angle or from right to left or in a circle. Thatching is overlapping brush strokes, okay? So it's like you're making X's but the X's are overlapping each other and crisscrossing over each other to help blend the color, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a combination of red and white, and then every once in a while we'll throw in some blue, uh, and by using this thatching technique and spreading the paint across the canvas, it'll start to make other colors appear, like pink and purple, and what we want is we want to have a variety of light and dark patches. So because this is the first layer of paint that we're putting on our canvas, we want to load our brush fairly well so that we can spread it across the surface, okay? So I'm going to dip generously in some white, and then maybe I'll lightly touch the red just to start, okay? So generously in white, lightly touch a little corner in some red. And then to do the thatching technique, so see I'll start by wiping both sides of my brush, and making a little X pattern. And you'll notice that as you start to overlap multiple X's, see how the color starts to blend and disappear? And you may have some areas that are lighter and some areas that are darker, and that's what we want. So you're just gonna continue to grab paint from, you know, paint from your palette, and you can take just red in some areas. So see, I just took a little bit of red and maybe added that below using the thatching brush stroke, okay? Maybe I want it to be a little bit lighter before the, under that. So I'm not cleaning my brush because we want to mix all these colors together. And I'm working in one little area at a time because uh, the paint will blend best while it's fresh and wet. So if we create little thatched and blended areas, um, we can continue to add to it. So see here, if I touch a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and a little bit of white, 
what's going to end up happening is it'll look blue at first, and then as it blends in some areas, it will start to turn purple. Okay, so the two rules with acrylic paint here, guys, are acrylic paint blends best when it's wet. And so the more we run our brush over the paint while it's fresh and wet, the more blended it will be. Okay, so if I run this over this a million times, see how it, and push my brush into the canvas, see how that softens, softens the middle color here and sort of blends that all together. If uh, the paint is dry or I don't have enough of it, I'm, and I just do one or two brush strokes, see how this is very rough and you have very hard lines so in this we want to kind of avoid the hard lines and but we want to have a variety of color so if i ended up like this and i went oops i put too much red and i want to change that instead of continuing to blend the red what i would suggest that you do is either clean off your brush with water and wipe it off or just wipe your brush off on your towel and then you can come back with a lighter color like white. See, so I just dipped into some white paint. And then see what happens when I run the white over the red. See how it blends it out? Okay, so I want you guys to play with this thatching technique. And I want you to cover your whole canvas in patches of color. So the idea here is, guys, though, we don't want our whole canvas to be the exact same color. We want some areas to be lighter and some areas to be darker. But we don't want to use the pure, uh, the pure pigment of the paint. So we don't want it fully blue or fully red. We want it to be slightly lighter because when we create a silhouette or using the, the dark shadow paint, we want to leave enough of a contrast in the background for it to show up. So that's what we call creating positive space. So the, the silhouette is the negative space and the color is the positive space. But see what you should end up with is kind of like a tie-dye mishmash across your whole canvas. And so the beauty of this is that it will give the illusion of movement in the background. Um, it will create, um, you know, an even texture across the surface even though we're using multiple colors. So it will be uniform but different at the same time which will make your viewer's eye wander across the surface, okay? And um, it'll give you an opportunity to get familiar with your brush and just play. So you'll notice that when I'm adding these little patches of color, I'm not doing one giant section. I'm just doing little, little patches that are maybe like three or four inches across. And I'm not worrying about cleaning my brush because like I said, we're using complementary colors and we want the paint to not be too wet with water because we want to provide a skin on the surface of our canvas uh, so that all our other paint that we apply on there is going to end up drying, okay? So the beauty of this technique too is that if you start to blend your colors all over your canvas and you're noticing one of two issues, one, maybe all the colors are blending together into just one color, then what you wanna do is stop and let the paint dry a little bit and then when the paint is more dry to the touch, go back in um, with a clean brush and a different color to kind of break that up. Or you're not getting enough coverage so like maybe you're applying and you're seeing lots of white speckles, that just means you need to add a little bit more paint to your brush or push more firmly with your brush, okay? So I'm basically just taking whatever paint is on my bristles and I'm pushing against my brush and wiping it off on both sides until I have no more paint and then I get more paint, okay? So we wanna have a nice mis mismatch of color. So I'm gonna go back to the original painting just so you can kind of identify what that looks like in the background. So you'll notice, so see some brush strokes are going this way, some are going that direction, all over the place, and we're filling up the whole background of color and notice the variety. So we should have some very, you can use, you know, just white or light blue. And what I like about this exercise is even though we're all using the same colors and the same palette scheme, our eyes are drawn to different tones. So you may be more of a purple person or someone else may be more uh, into pinks. And so their, their canvas will 
show that. And so that's kind of interesting. So even though we're using all the same colors and using the same techniques, everyone's canvas will be a little bit, a little bit different, which, you know, makes me appreciate, appreciate that a little bit more. And so if you get into the issue of you put paint on your canvas and you feel like it's too much, like I said, don't continue to spread and make one giant area. You can take this and move it to another area of your canvas if you feel that so you can scoop it off and move it to another area if you feel or you can just like I said clean your brush off and wait for the paint to dry a little bit and then add a different color um, usually I like to use white just to kind of tone it down so if you feel like the the colors are too harsh you can definitely always come in with a little bit of white to kind of mix that mix that up so hopefully you guys can have fun and play with this and, you know, we'll have some nice, bright, tie-dyed canvases after this is all done. So I'm using red, blue, and white. And like I said, you, you can't go wrong by mixing any of these colors because no matter what combination you come up with between those three, they're all going to be complementary and beautiful. Because if you mix blue with red, you get purple. If you mix red with white, you get pink. Um, and then if you mix all three together, then you just get different variations of those tones. So... Let me know how this is working for you guys, and if you have any questions, just feel free to let me know. For you beginner painters, if this is your first time joining me, I always tell people that um, in order to have control over and manipulate your brush better, the lower you hold your brush, the more control you're going to have over it. So I hold my paintbrush like I hold a pen or pencil, and then... Um, nice and low because if you're holding it way back here uh, you may not have as much control over the lines or the balance as you become more agile as a painter though your grip will definitely adjust and change to what works best for you but I always tell people that that's a good starting point uh, for sure and if you don't like one area of your background not to worry acrylic paint is very flexible and easy to work with and you can definitely definitely wait for it to dry and come back in and warm up or cool down areas that that you want to change okay so that's the first step of the painting so hopefully everybody is able to follow along with that and um We'll be good to go and if for some reason this video disconnects just come back to the main page and I will be there with another video that happened to us last week and I want to make sure if we lose any painters that you're able to find me again so all the classes that we've been doing have been free during the shutdown. All the paint classes that I offer are open to all ages and all abilities. You don't have to have any experience to paint along with us. Uh, we, you know, we welcome everyone here and we want to give everyone an opportunity to express themselves and to learn. And I try and adjust my techniques to make it work for everybody. So if you have questions, I'm always open um, to answering those things and, and trying to help you fix what you feel like you're struggling with. But just remember that it's supposed to just be about relaxing, having a good time, learning, and you know, we progress through through those things. So hopefully um, you guys are able to find a good relaxing spot and enjoy yourself through the process and take something positive away from this. Here we go. So I'm just filling it in. So it's kind of fun to have some blues in there. Uh, if you don't like the blue and you want it to be more purple, then you would add red over the top of the blue uh, and pinks. So yeah, like I said, don't worry about it being um, mis mismatchy. We want it to be that way. It makes it more interesting to look at as a whole. So we're kind of mixing abstract with a little impressionism, a little cartooniness. I'm going to teach you guys an effective way to create a figure without um, a stencil. And so you can be like, I did that all by myself. And I didn't even have to trace or anything. <laughs> All my painting classes are original paintings of mine, and uh, when I'm teaching, I always try and encourage people to uh, branch out and kind of use that painting as inspiration, but then also uh, to, to
to add little elements to make it uniquely your own because especially if you're painting in groups it's fun to have a set of paintings rather than having all the paintings look exactly the same and in that token um, I like to remind people too that because of that this is the way that I teach your painting will not look like everyone else's and that's a great thing in art so remind yourself of that we're painting something um, that is uniquely yours and no one else in the world will have one like it and it can be straight from your heart and you know from our imaginations working together painting in groups is fun because um, I really feel like people become inspired by the energy of the group because when we're working in person especially uh, although I'm teaching certain techniques uh, when you see how other people interpret those directions you know you're able to take that into your own work and then and then grow from that as well, which is really, really cool. Today we are painting bubble fairies. So we are working on what is called, so this is our painting that we're gonna be doing. And so we're gonna create this whole background first, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to create some um, of the silhouettes. And then we're gonna add bubbles and sparkle to our painting afterwards. But yeah, so in the meantime, we're creating this tone. This is called a tonal background, guys. So if you're looking for technical terms, if you don't just prime your canvas with white paint and you do, um, you know, a thick look, uh, coat of color first, this is called creating a tonal background. So if you had lots of time on your hand and you were hands and you were making a, a, a painting for a commission for a customer. Because cotton, you know, canvas is made of cotton, um, a lot of times, depending on how much, you know, paint you're putting on the canvas, you want to make sure that your canvas is prepared. And so a lot of people will use primer or, you know, to get their, or gesso to get their canvas prepared. And what the gesso does is it's like, you know, white paint basically, and you put it over the surface and it makes the, the canvas smoother. It provides a skin for the other paint. To lay on and it makes it so the paint doesn't just continue to absorb into the surface so that's why we're adding this layer of paint first and then we're gonna build on top of that in layers coming forward and so this video will be available for uh, the next week so if you were not able to paint with us today and you're just watching you can definitely come back and watch the replay and check it out and then after um, after the end of the week I am pulling these videos from the Facebook and I am adding them to my Patreon account. That's okay, I can move this down. So I am moving these videos to my Patreon account and Patreon is um, a site that helps artists and creators to continue to, uh, to make money while they're creating content. So that means that if you purchase a subscription for five dollars a month that goes into my pocket every month and then I give you something in return for that so what I'm offering on my patreon page are all of access all access to all of my painting classes and more and then I make drawing and painting tutorials for other little fun projects and lessons and you get mentorship for um, drawing and painting so if you're trying to learn things and you want to talk about or have things critiqued or have you know little private sessions we do that um, I also have art prints on my patreon so if you become a member um, you know first time members get like a free art print and then I mail out postcards to everybody every month so you get a pen pal and it, you know in turn you guys are helping support me and helping uh, you know feed my family and I'm able to continue to create so during the shutdown we wanted a little bit of um, moral support and you know it was good for me to kind of have that community of people painting together also so I've been offering because that's what I have um, to give I have is that knowledge of painting or creating so I've been offering free painting classes online and just um, people have just been uh, tipping or giving contributions for that even though the classes have been free and so I just want to say to those of you that have donated or contributed in that manner I appreciate you and thank you so much um, that has made a difference for me and my family for sure uh, because most of my business 
um, before the shutdown was in doing public events. And so, uh, you know, a lot of that income was actually taken away. And so it's, we've all had to adapt and that's what I'm doing here. And this has been wonderful. And so we're making some changes and adapting to, you know, how things are now. So if you are just joining us and you want to paint this later, like I said, it will be available for the next week. How are all my other painters doing? Is everybody almost done? There we go. So again, so if you decided you didn't like one corner or you felt like it was too dark, you can always come back in with a second layer of paint and add all over. Just kind of let your mind loose, let your mind go, and just kind of go with the flow and do what you're gravitated towards. That kind of goes along with the magic of painting and creating a fairy anyway. Shouldn't be too structured in order for it to, um, you know, be organic and magical, in my opinion anyway. All right. All right, how's the connection, guys? We doing okay still? So if you want to um, brighten up your canvas and it's not, it's too light, then what you can do is, like I said, acrylic paint will continue to blend. If the, so if the paint is wet and you can get it on your finger or on your paintbrush, that means that it's just gonna continue to blend. So if you're wanting to get darker colors or you want it to be less pastel, then what you need to do is you need to either clean off your brush and wipe it off and run a dry brush over the canvas to help that paint dry. And then when the paint is dry, you can come back in and you can add, um, add darker colors over the top. So this may take a few layers and that's okay. Like I said, it's a building process and you know it's not gonna be done in the exact first step. So if you feel like you wanna add more purple at the top, add more purple at the top. If you wanna add more pink in there or just blue. Um, so I had a little bit of green on my palette and I think I'd like to add a little bit of, maybe a little bit of green and white. If you mix green and blue and white together, you'll get kind of a, a teal color. So see here, I can add a little wisp of, so green, blue, and white will give me kind of a teal color. So if I wanted to add that in, in a few places, I could add that in. And so again, the more you run your brush, push firmly and then wipe, 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 wipe. The more you do that with your paint, the more it will blend into the canvas and push into the canvas, okay? And remember, we're gonna be adding black and stuff down here in the bottom. So don't worry too much about, um, you know, we want the movement and stuff in the background because that's what it is. It's gonna be a background, which means we're gonna be covering up you know quite a bit of that so yeah and then once you do this once you can definitely do it again from what you've learned so um, don't feel like it's the end and you have to just do it once and that's it okay you can always come back in and add more feel like it's too much white just go in with some of those tones just by themselves just play and see what appeals to your eye if you're struggling with this technique too it may be because um, you know, you're worried about being too controlled. This is all about loose brush strokes. They don't all, they're not all the same length. They're not all the same shape. Some are longer, some are shorter. You'll have areas that are lighter, some that are darker. That's the idea. We just want to have 
variety for interest here. Okay, so here is my background, okay? And then here is the original. So like I said, you can add more purple tones if you want. You can add more blue. You can do some curved lines. So if I wanted to add, you know, some more curve on the side, I can take, here, so I can take a little white and blue. I can add lighter colors in there if I want. Like I said, all of these colors are going to look nice together. So there's no way, unless you accidentally dip into black, that any combination of these colors is not going to look beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to call it quits on my canvas because you can always come back in and, and add more later. But for now, and for the sake of time, I'm going to say that I'm done. Okay, so this is my background. You can see my whole uh, canvas for now. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I just want to create a bottom layer for my canvas. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add some grass in here and grass and mushrooms and stuff. So you can use your flat brush still or you can switch to a round brush. This will be up to you, but I'm going to continue to use the same brush that I have been using, except for instead of the wide part of the brush, I'm going to turn my brush sideways and use the skinny edge. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it generously into some black paint. And to get rid of the big blobs of paint, I can very gently wipe my brush off on both sides of my canvas, or on my palette, excuse me, so that the blobs of paint are removed, but my bristles stick together a little bit better. Okay, but my brush is fully loaded. And then I'm going to start from the bottom of the canvas, and then I'm, a gent I'm going to gently flick up. So I'm using the skinny edge of the paintbrush, and I can use pressure at the bottom and then less pressure as I, as I pull up. But I'm going to fill the whole bottom of the canvas with these grass brush strokes. So here, I'll show you what it looks like in the original again. So they're not all going the exact same direction. Um, you know, some are pointing this way, some are pointing that way. I want to make mine, I made mine a little bit longer along the sides to kind of keep with the roundness of the bubbles and kind of curve your eye inward. Um, I don't go much higher than a few inches from the bottom of the canvas. So see, I can slowly start to build. I can start short and then I can gradually make areas longer. If you have a stretched canvas, you want to make sure you go around the sides. I want the bottom of the canvas to be fully filled in, so I don't want to leave spaces like this. I want it to be filled in, but on the bottom, but then brushing up. And so the more you overlap the brush strokes, the more it will start to fill in too. And if they're looking a little rough, that means you need more paint, okay? Just make sure. Can you see the bottom of my canvas? Let me know if you can't see it. So we don't want the silhouette to detract away from the rest of the painting. So we want to make sure that the grass is kind of short because we don't want that to be the basis for our painting. We just want it to be kind of a frame for the rest of the picture. Okay. But yeah, so I'm just using nice, so I'm making sure my brush is really loaded. I'm using the skinny edge of the brush. And then, like I said, you can play. Let some of those grass blades curl. Let some go to the left, some go to the right. Make some areas higher, some shorter. If your blast grass blades are thicker than mine, that's okay, too. Because we're just looking at this as like a little up-close shot of what's going on down below. So you can definitely play and and make it your own in that way. So like I said, I want to make mine a little bit higher 
on the edges so that it kind of frames in the picture. So I'll make it higher on the edges, shorter as I get down towards the middle. And if you can see the bottom and the rest of the picture, just make sure you give me a thumbs up so I know that we're all on the same page and we're still happily painting and you can hear and see everything the way that it needs to be seen. So the live videos are funny because um, I can see your comments, but it's nice to hear voices. I have done some um, team building exercises for some, some businesses and birthday parties and private lessons using Zoom. And I like that because then I can, you know, you can show me examples of your paintings or what you have when you're running into direct issues and I can hear your voice and, and see your face. But um, if you definitely have an issue or you're having any sort of... Um, dilemma or you have a question, don't feel afraid like you can't put your paintbrush down and stop and, and type in a question because I'm here to help and assist and make sure that everybody gets what they need. So these do not, do not make patterns people. This is wild grass. <laughs> do not make it all the same length. Do not make it all the same height. You know, make it wild, wild and free. All right, but yeah, we want it to be nice and, you know, solid kind of in the base of the grass and then, you know, wispy and going different directions so that we can see the background still, which creates the dimension of, you know, this being in front and that being behind. And then also what I was saying before about creating what we call positive and negative space. So to create an effective silhouette, you need to have areas of positive space for there to be enough contrast in your painting. Okay. But yeah, there's there's my grass. Okay. So once you have your grass created, um, we can play and create, you know, a few little whimsical mushrooms if you want. Uh, and again, using your flat brush, you can take and create, um, you know, a stem for your mushroom. And you want to only make it maybe a few inches. I'd like to make it like a little bit curved so that it looks, um, you know, a little bit more natural, maybe a little thicker at the base here. And then you can add on a top, like maybe make it an upside down curve like this. And then you can connect. And so this is only a silhouette, so it's just a shadow, meaning the light is um, behind it. So it's just in black. But if you wanted to come in later on after this is dry and then paint colors on that, or I can show you how we can create kind of a, uh, a highlight or a reflection on that later, you definitely can do that. There's nowhere saying that you can't do that. This is just what I did for, for my painting. Okay, so you can make big ones like that, or you can make smaller ones that maybe go off in a different direction, a little bit shorter, okay, and then, you know, use the, the curve off to the side, okay, and I'm making these mushroom caps a, a lot bigger than down here to <laughs> keep this kid friendly. There we go. But you can add as many or as few of those as you want. So in this painting here, you'll see I use what I call the rule of third, or what's called the rule of thirds. So to create interest in your painting, instead of just doing one or two, you know, you do two or three different um, things at different heights. You could definitely even add, you know, some on the other side if you prefer. So you can do lots or little. Glad you caught that, Patty. <laughs> There we go. So, there we go. So you can add as many or as few as you want along the bottom, but remember, we don't want to um, deter away from our positive space. So, I don't want to do too many. Okay. 
So I'm still using my big brush, but if you feel more comfortable using a smaller brush to do this, you definitely can. I'm just using the skinny edge of my brush. So see, I just used the skinny edge. I pushed against my brush until the bristles bent and pulled up. And then I made a nice curve on the top up here and then connected those two together. And if you're not getting a crisp edge, for your outline, it's either because you don't have enough paint or you're not using enough pressure. You have to push firmly to get a nice crisp edge like that. And then again, the more you run your brush over the paint and push against it, the more it's gonna push that onto there and then give you an even surface. And because we already created the skin of color on the base here, then it should lay on there nice and flat and even. Okay. But there, so I mean, you can add as many as you want. You can add a, a caterpillar and a treasure cat and Alice and Wonderland. I'm a big Alice in Wonderland person. You can definitely play and add as many or as few of these as you want. I kind of feel like I need something else over here. But so next, we're gonna learn a another kind of a brush stroke using the flat brush, and we're gonna kind of create that spooky tree that was in the beginning of our painting here okay so we've created our tonal background we prepared the surface we made some grass along the bottom right ch -ch -ch -ch, using upward strokes using the skinny edge of our brush right and then we created some nice mushrooms so push 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 to create a stem right nice curved top overlapping and connect the dots and then we filled those in nice and even and like i said i like to make the base of the mushrooms a little bit wider Okay, so it's growing up into there. And then we're going to create kind of this tree branch here off to the side. So here is the original painting, okay? So here is my tree branch. So we wanna be careful with our tree branch so that it doesn't overtake our whole painting. We just want a little hint of it off to the side so that we still have lots of color and room for our fairy in there. But we do wanna make it look like it's kinda growing up and over. I guess that because these mushrooms are so low, this would probably be more of a bush than a tree, but that's okay. So <laughs> we're going to take our brush with the black paint and you're going to create a little bit of a curve on the side, way up here in the top part of the canvas, okay? And then you can kind of wiggle a line, but maybe making it slightly upward. So I want this to be curved so it's like coming from the trunk of a tree and then instead of going straight out to make it a little bit more natural you want to make it kind of wiggle and then slightly go up like it's going towards the light in the sky okay and then you can um, make like the base of the branch a little bit thicker or if you want to make it a little bit more natural and organic you can just occasionally throw in what I like to do is occasionally throw in a little little bump here or maybe a little bump down there after I've created my initial line to make it a little bit more um, organic and gnarly and and knotted looking okay and then when I create um, the additional tree branches I use what I call using the Y or the W technique because what people usually end up doing when they paint trees the one problem that they run into is creating too many branches and then overtaking their whole painting and so I like to either create a branch starting from the main branch that comes off so see how it creates like a sideways Y okay so I always start on the previous branch and then I come up and off and it can even end up off the top of the canvas that's okay but I always make this like the base of the branch a little bit wider and then as it goes out it gets a little bit skinnier so if I were to add another branch over here see I could come over and add a little see make a little Y right there or you know what's called a W where you do one two three branches so it looks like a chicken claw but yeah just um as the branches get further out, they would get more skinny. And so you can either use the same brush or you can switch to a smaller brush so that it makes it easier to manipulate. So see, I'm switching to a little smaller detail brush so that I can start on this branch and then continue out to make a little 
you know, a little point or somewhere for it to end. So here, let me. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that's the other thing. Don't make your branches perfect straight lines. You can just wiggle. Yep. There we go. Not much further. We're not messing much of the top of the canvas. <laughs> there we go. See, I just went right all the way to the top. But yeah, so if you're going to add any branches to this, you just, you don't need to add more than just like, you know, one little side branch off of each little, each little section. But see, yeah, if you add little, little bumps and knobs, it makes it look a little bit, a little bit more natural. So see, if you wanted to add another one, you could add a branch here. But that's up to you guys so you guys can grow this out I don't like to go much further than the halfway area of my canvas because I want to leave room for you know all the other fun stuff like bubbles and you know a little fairy dust and all that all that kind of stuff so I'm just gonna leave that alone for now okay but I mean you can play with that to your heart's content you can continue to make branches and then if you want to I just add little tiny leaves to the tips or occasionally on the branches and so how I make the leaves it's just like this so I just do like I go to the end of a branch maybe and I make a little curve like that and then I do another curve underneath so it looks like a little eyeball and then fill it in Okay, and then if you want to, you know, make it a little less straight and rigid, you can definitely take that shape and then kind of curl, curl the end a little bit or, um, but when I make the leaves too, I like to either do a single leaf or maybe do two leaves right next to each other. And they don't have to be the same size either. One can be smaller, one can be bigger, they can be curling in different areas. Okay, and so your leaves also don't have to be just on the end of the tree. There can be an imaginary little knob to the tree and you can add a leaf like randomly on a little spot off to the side if you want also. It's your tree, it's your imagination, guys. See here, so play and you can add as many or as few leaves as you want this tree could be you know dying and shriveled up or it can have a few more branches on it that's up to you guys but yeah so make sure that when you make new branches you always start on the previous branch and then come off so that it uh, has a little bit more of a natural look to it and then you always want to make sure that the little sections of the branches are a little bit thicker at the base and then as they grow out they're getting a little bit skinnier so if you guys want to access this video after this live session is over it will be on my main page in the videos for the next week and then after that it will be um, in my patreon account which is a $20 a month subscription to have access to all of the paint classes. You can also access other things that I have available for as low as $5 or $9 too. So yeah, I will be continuing to do live classes after this. Uh, I will also be doing private lessons and private events uh, remotely until we figure out what's going on with the shutdown and um, whether or not it's it's safe again to do public events, etc. But in the meantime, we're going to be staying safe and teaching online. And you can either schedule private, private sessions remotely, or you can subscribe to the Patreon. I will still be posting links on painting. You'll just have to access it through those other platforms. But I'll try and make it as simple as possible for you guys. So yeah, so you can play with that. And if you really enjoyed making the trees and you wanted to frame it in, I only had one on this side in the original painting, but you could certainly like do another one on the other side if you want to, or once your fairy is in here, you could maybe add a few little branches up in the corner on that side. That would probably look really nice, I think. Yeah, I think. 
It would look really nice. What do you guys think? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so look, we're like halfway done with this painting. We've created our tonal background. We learned how to paint the grass and the mushrooms, and then we created a nice gnarly tree with some leaves and stuff on the side. Hopefully everybody is happy with their trees. I always like to start with smaller brush strokes, and then, you know, you can always make them thicker if they are too skinny later. That's always the easier approach, and then, you know, make them short, and then you can always make them longer, same, same concept, but yeah. We still hanging in there? Everybody doing okay? I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page and I'm not going too fast for anybody. So if you need an opportunity to get a drink or have a snack or clean your brush and get some clean water, this is a good opportunity to be able to do that. In the meantime, you can Ogle me, or <laughs> one. Of, this is one of my original paintings right there. See, we, we'll go on a walk on the woods. So while you guys are establishing yourself and getting ready to move on to the next stage, let's go for a walk in the woods. Ooh, I found some chanterelles. Oh, yum. Can you guys find Bigfoot in this painting? I don't think you can, oh yeah, you can see him. So if you look really closely at this painting, you can find Bigfoot. The original painting is 24 inches by 36 inches. It's pretty big, but anyway. So give me thumbs up if you guys are ready to move on to the next spot and we will start to learn how to make some bubbles and fairies. Are we ready? Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, so let's play for a little while. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to clean out your water bowl and then I want you to start with a clean, fresh brush because we're gonna paint some bubbles first and then we are going to learn how to paint that fairy. But we're gonna wait on that part, okay? So clean brush and because we're gonna be using white paint, okay? So you can either use a little brush for this or you can use your bigger brush. It just depends on how big you want your bubbles to be and you know I'm all about drama so it's fun to have a lot of different sizes and the cool thing is about bubbles too is bubbles are mostly round but if you've ever seen a, a bubble kind of blow in the wind or get stuck in the, the water or something they kind of have war they can have warped shapes also so I just want to show you guys here let's go back to the original just for a second here I don't want to knock everything over. Okay, so you'll notice, see, yeah, some bubbles can be circles. And some bubbles can be kind of ovals or they can be kind of wiggly. See, this one looks kind of like a pear. Okay, so we can definitely play, play with that. And so this is another reason why having multiple colors in our backgrounds will make making bubbles fun. Okay, so when you're creating bubble, you want to make it look like it's translucent and you create a halo. So what I do is I take a little bit of white paint and then I wipe my brush off so I don't have too much. I don't need too much. If you have a little brush, you can kind of roll it. If you're using your flat brush, that'll also work. But I want to pick a nice spot that where my bubble is going to be is going to contrast. Like I wouldn't want to do a bubble on the white area because that wouldn't show up very well. But I'm going to just paint a circle. See? So I'm just going to paint in a white circle and make sure that the outer edge is nice and crisp, okay? There you go. And I'm not worried about if it's totally filled in in the middle. I just need the outer edge to be nice and white, okay? So what you do is you paint that white circle and then you look at what is the background color behind that white circle because you want it to look see-through, right? So what I do is I look at what that background color is and I kind of try and go back to my plate 
and get a color that's kind of close to it. It doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry if it's not exact. And it just get a tiny bit of that color, okay? Tiny bit, that means wipe your brush so you don't have a lot. And I put it right in the middle of that white bubble I just painted, okay? And because the paint is wet, that means that it'll blend. So I can take my pointer finger, okay? And I can just move in a circle and blend and smudge that bubble so that it's nice and blended. So here, let's get a, a zoom in on this so you guys can see a little bit better, okay? So we painted our bubble white and then we added the paint to the middle, okay? And then we can use our finger to blend. So the idea here is, is that we wanna have a white edge, but we wanna still be able to see that background through here, but make this look kind of blurred and a little bit more transparent. So you can use your finger until you can smudge and get that. And so the benefit of the smudging is not only is it easy to, to get that little finished look, but you can also kind of wipe and make sure the paint's not too wet so that you can create a little sparkle on your bubble. So you can either take your paintbrush handle like this and dip it into some white like this, and then you can just tap it on the dark color doop doop to create a little bubble like that or if the bubble is really big I'll show you how to create a little bit more of a, a sheen on that so let's practice and do a bubble on the pink area so I would take white paint right take white paint dip roll my brush or kind of wipe it off so I have enough but not tons okay paint my white circle Okay, does the circle have to be the exact same size as that one? Heck no. Does it have to be the exact perfect circle? Heck no. This has to be white on the outer edge. And so you don't even have to worry about completely filling the middle because remember, we're gonna be putting that color in the middle. So we just wanna make sure that the outer edge that creates kind of a halo is nice and nice and crisp okay and then I can go back to a color that's pretty close to the middle and I can so you can start in the middle and if you have if it's a bigger bubble then obviously you can use your brush a little bit to kind of spread it out from the middle but then when you get close to the edge see that's when you can take your finger and you can smudge it so if it's not smudging add a little bit more paint to your to your canvas or just tap a little bit with your with your brush, okay? So if it's not smudging, you need a little bit more paint. And if it's smudging too much, chill on the paint, people. So there, that way we get a nice little halo. And then again, you'll take the handle of your paintbrush and then you can dip the handle of your paintbrush in there. And then you can go back to that dark area and have a little bubble off to the side. Okay, so I'm gonna add some magical little bubbles all over, and I'm gonna leave this area alone because that's where my fairy is gonna be, but I'm gonna play for a little bit, and I'm gonna add a few little bubbles in different areas. So I want you guys to play also and you know, kind of experiment and maybe make some different shapes. Like I said, some of the bubbles, if the wind, they're blown in the wind, they don't have to be exactly round. They can be kinda, they can be kinda wiggly too. But yeah, try it in different areas of color and see what techniques work best for you. And remember that when you do that background color, it doesn't, because we have so many colors all over the place, it doesn't have to be exactly the color that's behind. Just as long as it's you know, in that family. And if it's not blending well, what do we do, guys? What do we do? We go back and add more paint. And then you use your finger. And then if the bubble 
isn't white on the outer edge and you want it to be more white, just let the paint dry for a minute, like give it a break, let it dry, and then come back in when it's dry and do that. Because if you try and do it while it's still really wet, then it's just gonna continue to blend and turn into a weird color. <laughs> Okay, so what you guys can do is you can make bubbles or you can alternate between making bubbles and just making a little bit of sparkle. So just to make a little sparkle or little dots, you can just use the handle of your brush. See, I can dip the handle of my paintbrush and then I can just make little dots randomly too. So in the original painting, this is how I did this. I kind of created a trail because I wanted it to look like the fairy was kind of shooting some magic out of her little bubble hand there. So I made like a little trail. So you can definitely wait and do parts of that later if you want. But um, yeah, that's how, that's how I made that happen. I'm also going to show you how to make some of these dots a little more sparkly. But But I will tell you, like, the more of these that you add in there, too, the more it brings some brightness to your painting. And these could be different sizes. You can add them everywhere, or you can just randomly add them in a few spots. But obviously they're not going to show up if you add them in areas that are not dark enough. So be aware of that also. Dot, dot, dot. And you got to make sure you make sound effects while you're painting or else that doesn't work too. But yeah. Yeah, so bar bubbles, sparkles, magical stuff all the best things. All right. Add a little blue in there. How many bubbles do we need? What do you think? Is everybody able to see okay? So if you really want to get, you know, advanced with bubbles and how they work and you really want them to pop out, then you would get into like, this is highlights and stuff, but then you would get into how to create like little cast shadows and things behind your bubble. So for instance, if the light is coming from up above and here's your little sparkle on your bubble, you could, and I don't want to, I mean, if you are nervous about doing this, you definitely don't have to, but I just want to show you. So if this is like, if this is purple and we made just along the bottom edge of this bubble, slightly darker purple, just slightly darker and created kind of a crescent shadow, um, you can kind of bring forward that bubble a little bit more. But that's if you start to get like really into, um, you know, making things extra, extra detailed. So maybe I'll do a video just on how to create a bubble and then we'll just focus on one bubble, like, you know, and making it hyper hyper realistic but yeah you would start with the darkest color like right around the bottom edge and then you would slowly start to blend and bring it out in a way so that it kind of brings that forward a little bit more I don't know if you guys can see the the difference on camera but But yeah, you can also use your finger for blending, for things like that. But yeah, you have to be kind of uh, a little bit more precise when it comes to creating uh, 
gradation or shades. You guys see that? Does it show up on camera? I don't know. Anyway, so bubbles, bubbles, bubbles everywhere. So yeah, so that's how we make some of the sparkle magic. That's how we make some of the bubbles. If you wanna add some little tiny um, stars like this, so I'll show you here. So like little stars like this in your painting, um, you would just start with a dot. So you would you wanna use a, the smallest detail brush that you have because that definitely would make it easier for you if it comes to a point. Um, if you don't have a smaller detail brush, then you might wanna just stick to um, just the dots because it will make it harder for you to get more precise lines but yeah so if you want to make a little sparkle you would just make a dot with the handle of your paintbrush like we were doing before and then you would take your small detail brush and then you would touch the dot and then you would lightly flick up touch the dot lightly flick down very gently because you want to create a point and then you would make an X. So every brush stroke I'm starting from the dot though. So I would touch the dot, lightly pull out, touch the dot, lightly pull out, pull out, out. So I have six points there. So I started with up, down, up to the right, down to the right, up to the left, down to the left to create kind of a tiny little sparkle. So obviously, um, that you have to be a little bit more controlled for, but see, yeah, you make that dot and then you touch, you pull up, down, off to the side here. And then you also have to be very gentle in order to get those little dots. And so what you could do too is if you ended up doing one of those and then you didn't like how it turned out, um, the beauty of that is, is white is one of the background complementary colors and you can just blend it out while the paint is fresh and wet and you can you know practice it or you can practice that on your scratch paper also but yeah you can add as many of those as you want to and that's kind of a fun effect but after this guys after this we're gonna paint our fairy we're gonna learn how to paint the fairy so up down So if you were going to add mushrooms, I don't know, you can make the mushrooms look like amanitas if you want. That's what I always imagine in Magical Fairyland. Magical Fairyland is like red mushrooms with white stalks and, and white spots. But I mean, this is fantasy land, so you could do, I mean, it's Pride Month, you could do rainbow spots. <laughs> you could do red, white, yellow, blue, pink neon green. Uh, if you have access to glow-in-the-dark paint, you can add some glow-in-the-dark uh, halo bubbles on here. So when you turn out the lights, your painting glows. That could be really fun or do outlines around everything. There's so many opportunities to play with this painting and make it even more um, detailed and creative than even what I'm able to provide you in this short amount of time. You can take glitter and you can, you know, you know, pour glitter all over the edges but yeah so where we're at right now is we've painted all of our extra details and the last spot that we have to do is to create this little guy or gal whichever you prefer and then if you want to you can do a big bubble around them or you can just leave them floating in the sky but if you guys are ready for that step you are going to need clean brushes i would get a scratch piece of paper so you can at least practice first if you want and then um you know your little paintbrush and then we're gonna practice and show how to create the little figure for the fairy and then you can apply it to your canvas i'm super excited to see how you guys all do with this let's turn it around to make sure that we're back on the canvas here and I'm going to get a scratch piece of paper first just so that we can so that we can practice okay so remember you can always go back to adding more bubbles and sparkles and things later so don't feel like um, you have to stop doing that once we paint the fairy you can definitely go back afterwards and continue to add to your painting okay guys 
but here's what we're gonna do for for the fairy so I'm just gonna talk about the the basic steps for creating this image before you put it on your canvas so that you guys can can follow along okay so uh, I'm just going to use a pencil just to start, just to create a little outline, and then you guys can do the same on your canvas, on a scratch piece of paper, and then fill it in, okay? So you want to make your fairy, you have to kind of imagine about how big you want the body to be, okay? So you have to look at your canvas and, and say, okay, I don't want it to exceed this big for its entire body, because if you end up making it that big, that's okay too, but... Um, you have to be aware of portions, so we're going to talk about how to do that. So the first step is for creating your little fairy is you're just going to create a little circle, okay? So we want to make a little circle and a line to make, you want to make it about the size of like a dum-dum lollipop, if that makes sense, guys. So the circle will be a little bit smaller than a dum-dum lollipop. Do you guys have dum-dums in Canada? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, these are just tiny little five cent lollipops here. But yeah, you just do a circle and a line down the middle, okay? And so this line down the middle is going to signify a bunch of things for our body. Here's our head. This is going to be the neck. It's going to be like the the middle of the body. And then this, the bottom of this line is going to be one of the fairy's legs, okay? So we're going to identify a few things once we create this line here, okay? So we want to figure out about where the middle of this line is, okay? So we make a line coming down, and then we find out about where the middle of that is, and you can create a little tiny line, okay? And that's where the legs are going to separate, okay? So this is right here, and then we're going to do a dot in the middle of this line. Okay, so we made a dum-dum, we made a line, we found the middle of that line, and then we found the middle of this line. So the reason why I had you put a dot there is because that dot is going to be one of the fairy's knees. Okay? So the reason why this is important is because this line, that's fairy junk. <laughs> okay? So we need our leg, so if you're having a leg that's kicking back, you want all the lines to be the same length. So you want the line for this leg that's kicking back to be the same length as this line. And if you're unsure about how to measure that and how to get it the same length, you can use your pencil and you can hold your pencil up to the line and then you can kind of pinch your finger where the line ends and then you can turn your pencil to the side to mark that up. So here, let me show you in the original painting here what that looks like. So. Here's our other fairy. Let's do this this way, okay? That way you guys can see, see a little bit better, okay? So here's our head, there's our body, okay? There's where the knee is, okay? So I'm gonna make another dot here, okay? And then I'm gonna make another line the same, so these should be this, 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 and this, should all be lines that are the same length. Okay, so you can kick this leg back straight. You can make it go up higher if you want. That's up to you. But they should all be the same length. Okay? And so that means we need to define where the waist is. And so the, that means that the waist is going to be, this is the belly button of the fairy. So see this line has been divided into four parts. One, two, three, four. And they should all be equal parts. So this is the waist, this is the belly button, that's the fairy junk, these are the knees, and those are the legs, okay? So we're creating a skeleton here, okay? So just below the head, we're going to create a little T, so I got to leave a little bit of a space so that our fairy has a neck, okay? All right? And I don't want it to be too much wider than the head because I don't want the fairy to look like a linebacker unless that's the look that you're going for and that's totally acceptable, okay? So these are going to be the shoulders to our fairy, okay? So that means that in order to make arms, we want the arms to be the same length as our leg lines, 
okay? So I can measure how long this needs to be, okay? And then I can make the arms go in any position I want. So I would make a line there, dot, make a line here, dot, okay? And then if I want my arms to go up, I can make it go up. See, and this line would be the same length as that line. This one can come down if I want, and it's going to be the same length as that line. Am I going too fast? Does this make sense to everybody? I hope it does. <laughs> so you see where I'm going with this. This is what is called, we're creating a very basic skeleton for our fairy that we're going to build up on. Okay, so we have this, this, is this line here that's going to create um, our legs. And then we have our shoulders and our arms there. So we can add a little foot by adding a little line here on the bottom. And we can add another little foot over here by adding a little line there. And this is so tiny, I'm not even worried about hands right now because we can disguise the hands with hair or we can put a bubble on it or um, you can just do a little circle at the base here like this and it'll look like their hand is crumpled up, okay? So obviously if this is a boy fairy, uh, it doesn't need too many curves. Um, so you can kind of just thicken the body up from here. But if you want it to be, um, you know, a little feminine fairy, you can start at the armpit. So the armpit would be here. Okay, and then you can create kind of an hourglass shape on both sides here like this. See, all the way under the the line here so what we're doing is we're creating kind of an hourglass shape and then we can create a little skirt for our fairy underneath that okay so I'm gonna paint this in and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I paint this in all right so if I take black paint I'm gonna paint in my little circle okay and then I'm going to paint my line, and I'm not worried if this is a perfect line. I just want it to be kind of skinny for now, because we can paint this in later. But there's a line there, okay? And then I have my knee, and then I have my other line over here. Okay, so obviously the smaller brush you have, the easier this is going to be. But we work with what we've got. <laughs> okay, and then I made my little T. You want to make sure that if you make the T for the neck, that, you know... You're not turning it in too much of an alien, so don't leave the space too big, okay? But then you've got a line here, line down, line here, line down, okay? So there's our basic body. So now we can build up from that. So what I like to do is I like to build from the center and go out. So here's my armpit, and I'm creating a little hourglass on this side, okay? And then I can make my skirt come down over the legs here. Okay, so if this is a tiny little girl, you don't need anything. If you want it to be a more a more womanly womanly fairy, you could do a little a little side boob here by just doing a tiny little bump on that side, and then create a skirt. So there's that. So you can make this as wild as you want. So if you want this to be, I make it kind of torn and tattered. So I start from the bottom, and then I just kind of let it loose here but if you want it to come out you can build it up but um, instead of leaving the legs like sticks you can kind of build them up a little bit so think about how your body is built so your thighs are going to be slightly thicker at the top and then as you get to the knee they'll get a little skinnier again because that's the knee okay so you can make those a little bit thicker if you want and build them up and then the calf of the leg so the front of the leg is going to be flat because that's the shin and then the back would have a little bump in the back so you could create a tiny little bump to create a calf on the leg of each of those little fairies okay and it's all about it's kind of like sculpting but with a paintbrush you just kind of look for what you need to add in there and so these feet don't need to be anything super fancy they can look like they're wearing ballet slippers so they could just be little tiny rounded rounded lines filled in and the same thing goes for the arms you want to thicken them up just like you would thicken up the legs so where the shoulder is 
it's going to be a little bit thicker at the arm and go towards the elbow and then it'll be skinny at the elbow again and then where the forearm is it'll be a little bit wider and then you can make a little circle for a hand or you can play there okay and then you can also kind of round off the shoulders a little bit so if it's if you made your lines really angled you can kind of soften them and and round them a little bit so they look a little bit more uh, natural okay so there's the body and so because this is a side profile for the fairy, uh, we can add hair, but we can make the hair cover the back of the neck. Okay, so, so I can take this circle and I can take black paint and I can just kind of wiggle some lines back like the fairy's hair is blowing in the wind. Okay, and then if you want to, like I had just a little round face here, but if you want to add like a slight little chin you can make the fairy's face a little bit more pointed on the bottom. Okay, and in the original I had a little hat. You don't have to have a hat, but if you want to add a little hat, you can. All I did was add a little point off to the side to make it look like a little acorn hat. Okay, but that's how I made the body for the fairy. Okay, and the, the part that probably scares people the most is how to make how to make those wings. But I'm going to show you a nice easy way to do that. Uh, but that's how we make the body. So I'm going to paint the body. I'll walk through the steps again with you on how to create the body on my canvas. Okay, and we can do it together. Okay, so you can pencil this in on your canvas first. Um, or you can just go for it and paint with your paint with your brush But I will tell you you don't want to draw on your canvas and then erase because it won't work on the Painting so you just got to go with the flow go with the flow Okay, so I'm gonna do a little circle, right? And I'm gonna make a line So it looks like a dum-dum <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna divide I'm gonna find the middle of the line the middle of that line and then the middle of this line okay so there's that that's my first leg okay and then this is gonna be my second leg So each of those sections is the same length. I'm going to make a little T up here for shoulders. And then I'm going to make one arm go down and it's going to be the same length as the lines for my legs. Okay. And if you're having issues controlling your little brush, Again, I will tell you and reiterate, the lower you hold your paintbrush, the more control you're gonna have over that brush. And when you're using a round detail brush, if you dip and then roll your paintbrush off to the side, it will bring the tip to more of a point, but also load the brush really well for you, okay? So I've got my little body, so now I can create my little hourglass curve, okay, from the armpits. So I want to make sure I fill that space in so there's no little space underneath and then I can make my little skirt or I can wait to do that after I do my legs. Okay. When I make the legs I want to make sure that it's thicker at the thigh. Okay. And that the front of the leg is straight but then maybe create a little bump on the back of the leg to create a cat. Hopefully you're all still there. You still all with me? We're almost done. We're gonna create two little feet. Okay, we can use little circles for the hands or you can just use the handle of your paintbrush. Okay, and then our hair, remember we're going to cover the back of the neck because when your hair is long, 
and the wind is blowing, your neck is not exposed. So because this is facing this way, we don't have to worry about the back of the neck showing. And then you can add a little bump there if you want to make a little more ladylike. Okay. And then if you want to add a little hat, remember you just do a little point, but I kind of do it off to the side. So it's at an angle, and then you can add a little chin, just very, very gentle, very small brush strokes. So I always like to start from the middle and then gently and carefully work my way out to make sure that's um, where I want it to be. So it's much easier to build from small brush strokes than it is to like make big ones and then have to go back in and, and make adjustments that way. So there's my body. Okay, there's my body for my little fairy. And then if I want to um, give her wings, I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So there's a couple of different things that you guys can do to create these wings, okay? So instead of using like solid, solid black paint, um, what I like to do is I like to take the black paint, but then I dunk my brush into water and I really, really thin out the paint. So I just keep dipping my brush in water and adding it to my paint and adding it to my paint. And if you've ever had a tattoo, uh, this is how they make black and gray tattoos. So black and gray tattoos, they take the ink and then they dilute the ink and then until it's almost, instead of just being black, it's, you know, when you apply it, it's gonna be gray or lighter, okay? So I'm gonna go back to here to show you guys how to add the, the wing. Okay, so because our fairy is at the side, I'm going to take this really diluted black paint. So I want to make sure it's really, really watered down. Okay, and then you can kind of wipe your brush off. Okay, you don't need a lot of it. Just make sure it's nice and wiped off and brushed. So I'm going to do an imaginary line from the neck, and I'm going to come up, over, and then come back in to the back. Okay. And then because she's sideways, I want the next one to be kind of skinnier. So you can come up from her head here and then back. Okay. And then the bottom wing is going to be like a teardrop. So it's going to start from the middle and come out like a teardrop. Okay. And because it's sideways, you probably don't need to have both but that's up to you if you decide you wanna have both. But see how doing the thinner black paint, so you can test it out first on a piece of paper to see if it's light enough. And then again, after it's light enough, roll your paintbrush so it's not full of a ton of paint so that you can paint that on there. And so having that light wispiness will make it look more translucent than if you use just pure black. Okay, so that's why we wanna water that down. So it, it doesn't matter what color the water is, you just need to really dunk it down. Just, and you don't need that much paint either. You just need to dunk it until it's nice and gray. And then, like I said, I make a little teardrop from the back here. Okay, and I wanted to, when I did these original uh, wings, I was imagining like a dragonfly kind of. And so this is how I did this, okay? So what I did was I made nice long lines using that thin paint and I went down, down, and I want all the lines to like kind of look like they're going towards the same spot, okay? So even though they're about evenly spaced out, they're gonna slightly angle, slightly angle as they come down. Okay, so I'm gonna do that to these ones too. So these will come down, 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 okay, these ones are gonna go up, okay, out, all right? And then to make them look like a dragonfly, I just staggered random little dash marks. So I could just go like this and make little boxes out of this little section here. And then I can do the next one and they can be kind of randomly staggered. Okay, and you can even break that up if you wanted to. But yeah, the lighter, the lighter the paint is, the easier, like the more translucent it looks. And then you don't want all of the lines to match up exactly. You want them to kind of be broken and staggered, so. 
And then if you don't like this look and you don't want it to be, you know, use the dash point lines, you can create the shapes and then just leave the shapes or you can fill it in a solid color. Like you can make the wings pink or you can make them purple or you can, you know, decorate them like a monarch and add little spots and paint them orange. I would love to see different variations of how you guys creatively dress up these wings. I just want to give you like the very basic shape, but this is how I created the, the ones in the original paintings. And so, yeah, that's how I did that. But yeah, look, so there's, there's that, there's our little silhouette. There's my little fairy in the sky. Okay. So you could even take like a little bit of white and kind of highlight the wings. If you, I didn't do this in the original, but I mean, you could technically take like a little bit of white and kind of outline some of the, the wings if you wanted to, to add a little bit of sparkle. See, I just wiped a little bit of white on there just to make that. And then if you want to, in the original, I did a big old bubble. I did like a giant bubble around the fairy. Uh, you don't have to do that, but if you wanted to try that, um, you know, find a bowl or something that's big enough. So let's see, here's a nice bright yellow bowl. So I can take this and I can put that over the top and I can trace with the pencil and then go along that line or I can, so here I'll. Okay, so just to get a loose idea and you don't have to do this if you don't want to, if you really like it and you just wanna leave them everywhere but I want to have light pencil lines because you don't really want that mixing and because this is such a large bubble you just want to kind of outline little sections at a time so I would do like this section and then kind of blur it a little bit and then I'd move on to the next section and kind of blur it and you can add the other color if you need to so see I could add there's a little bit of that and then kind of smudge it with your finger So see, I'm going around the edge and then you can kind of smudge it. And if it's not smudging all the way, then you can definitely get, you know, some of the, the background color to add in there. And this is the other thing, because this is kind of translucent and see-through, it doesn't have to be like a super, super thick line. Like you can have little parts of it that are kind of disappearing a little bit. All right to give you guys an idea. So see, look, if I add this on here and I'm like, whoa, that's just too big or too much, then I can go back to, you know, some of that, that pink or that purple and I can kind of blend that in there. And use your finger. Smudge it out. You can also add like a tiny bit of water to your brush, just a tiny bit, and then kind of run it. So if you have white on your brush and then you add a little bit of water, then you can kind of run that along the inside and that will help to moisten the paint also but you don't want to add too much because you don't want to lift any of the paint that you put on there. But yeah, see, if I have white on my brush and then dip it in a little bit of water, that helps kind of create that illusion around the outer edge, the halo that we're trying to create. And then because this is a giant, big old bubble, we don't want to have just one tiny little dot. You want to kind of create, you know, so what I like to do is I like to do like a big, swoosh on the inner corner and then you can take your finger and kind of smudge that and then I do another one on the opposite side but you want to kind of follow the curve of the of the bubble there and that gives it more of the illusion that it's encapsulated inside inside that bubble and you can rebuild the shape like if you don't love the shape of the bubble you can definitely you know go to little areas and start to 
build it out a little bit or you can take some of that darker color and run it along around the outer edge but um, there's lots of ways that you can adjust this yeah look at that look at that cute little fairy in a bubble so yeah if you wanted to add more little magical stuff like I said go back to the handle of your paintbrush and you can make little you know little dots like she's casting a magical spell if you want it like if you feel like her little her little stub here looks weird <laughs> and doesn't look natural then you know put a bubble in her hand or put a little flower in her hand or something to make it look like you did that on purpose so she can have a bubble inside of a bubble or she can be holding a little bumblebee or a, a diamond or um, you know, like a flower or a treasure box or, or whatever. Your imagination is the limit here, people. So what do you think? So yeah, we could definitely keep adding to this painting forever forever and ever anybody want a fairy painting <laughs> this painting is now for sale so uh if you guys enjoyed yourself thank you so much for tuning in um like i said we have been um offering these classes for the last three months during the shutdown this is our final um free live online but you can certainly come back and watch the replay of this uh, for the next week and then all the classes are going to be shifted to um, a different platform on my Patreon page where you can do a subscription and then have access to all the classes or you can pay a one-time fee to have access um, access to the to the other classes and if you need to soften your brush strokes while you're still working if you actually wet your paintbrush a little bit and run it along the inner edge of your bubbles that will help you to blend that I really appreciate you guys tuning in if you felt that this class brought your um, brought you value I have posted a PayPal link if you'd like to make a tip or a contribution those are always um, appreciated and help us to continue to bring you great content um, I'm so happy to see so many different people from all over the place um, coming together in this space creating and helping to support me I hope that you enjoyed this event uh, I can't wait to see your results keep painting and keep us posted on things that you would like to see and learn and um, we'll keep creating and sharing with you so share your pictures in the comments share like subscribe all that good stuff uh, my name is Danielle Rimbert I'm tuning out but I hope you guys have a good evening thank you so much